Hello, everybody, and welcome to Arkansas Live. I just want to thank you for joining me today for today's edition of Arkansas Live. All week we're teaching on God's order of events. So stay tuned. Arkansas Live starts right now. Okay. I'm going to start off by putting this diagram back up on the screen so you'll know what we're doing and where we're going uh, all week. And it may take us more than one week. But anyway, uh, the diagram is up on the screen right now. Here's God's order of events. As you can see, the upper left-hand corner, the church age. This is the age of the church, the dispensation of the church, the body of Christ. That's where we are right now in God's order of events. Then right next to that, uh, you'll see a vertical line that goes straight up. That is the rapture of the church. I realize this may be small for you to see on TV, but that arrow going up is the rapture of the church. The catching away of the saints. We're coming up to meet Jesus in the air. This is not the second coming. This is a taking out. We are being caught up to meet Jesus in the air, taken out. So we will miss the first three and a half years, the tribulation period. And that's where the Antichrist, the false prophet, they're all in their place. And that first three and a half years, all Israel will be saved. A multitude of Gentiles saved. Uh, I've not found any place in the New Testament that refers to a worldwide church revival before the rapture. It really takes place after the rapture because 144,000 Jewish evangelists are preaching the gospel to the kingdoms of the world. Israel will be saved. All Gentile nations that receive Christ will be saved. Then in the middle of that tribulation period, uh, there's three and a half years of great tribulation. This is where Israel will be uh, hidden. Some thinks it will be in the city of Petra. But anyway, they'll be hidden uh, in this last three and a half years because of uh, the tribulation will be so great. And then at the end of that tribulation period, seven years, of course, the church is in heaven. We're seated in heaven with God. In that seven years, Jesus comes back riding a white horse, King of kings, Lord of lords, and that's his second coming. And he comes, he defeats the Antichrist, the false prophet, with the breath of his mouth, and at the end of the tribulation period, and we go into the thousand-year reign of Christ. So that's the summation of uh, the God's order of events. Now, I told you yesterday I wanted to read some questions and answers. Uh, and, you know, there's always questions. I, I ask them over and over again myself. I keep reading, keep studying this. I don't want it to ever get cold or ho-hum. And uh, I've taken these questions uh, from my friend Terry James down in Benton. Uh, you've seen him here on Arkansas Live. You've seen him on Crisis and Prophecy um, with uh, Nathan Jones and David Reagan. And you also seen him on Skywatch a few times. But uh, these are uh, questions I think we could maybe have already answered some of them. But here is uh, number one. What qualifies a person to be caught up in the rapture of the church? You might say, Pastor Cole, well, how do I qualify for that? I don't want to stay here during the tribulation. I don't want the wrath of God on me. How do I qualify for the rapture of the church? The word of God teaches that Christ will return for the delivering of his church. Remember, the catching away of the saints, the taking out of the saints prior to the tribulation period is to save us from all the wrath that's going to be poured out on the earth, on Israel, on Gentile nations. It's to save everybody, to deliver us. Everyone who is among those called brethren, 1 Thessalonians 5.10, is a member of the church. Truly born again now, not just going to church, not just religious, but truly born again, you are called brethren and you are a member of the body of Christ. You will be the object of deliverance that will come from the rapture. In other words, Jesus is not going to let you stay down here and suffer and tribulate with all of those that are rebellious, have rejected Christ as Messiah, etc. 
The single qualification is that an individual uh, must be a Christian, one who has believed the gospel of Jesus Christ and knows God's Son, Jesus, as his personal Savior. Is that you? Have you accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior? Been born again? Now you're a member of the church? If that is you, then you don't need to fear or worry or be anxious about anything as long as you're fellowshipping with God. Now, I'm not talking about just being on the church row or calling yourself a Christian because you're born in America. No, no. I'm talking about being born again. If that's you, you're going into rapture. Now, if that's not you, you'll miss the rapture. So I want to give you an opportunity right now, right here, right now, in your home, living room, hotel room, <laughs> wherever you're watching, <laughs> to make sure you don't miss this rapture. So if you would, just close your eyes, don't be distracted, and just pray this prayer with me. Do you believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God? Yes. Do you believe God raised Him from the dead? Yes. Do you believe that He died for your sin? Yes. Then say this out loud. Jesus, that's right, repeat it after me. Jesus, I believe you're God's Son. I believe you died for my sin. I believe God raised you from the dead. Come into my heart, Jesus. Make me a new creature. And I thank you for it. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, and it's a simple prayer, but if you prayed that prayer and you meant it, let me send you this little booklet. It's called God Loves You. It'll help you get started right in your Christian life. It'll tell you what happened to you. It'll tell you about your salvation. It'll tell you about the Holy Spirit. And uh, I want to send it to you. Just call the number on the screen, uh, 1-888-641-3375. And, uh, or you can download the book online free of charge. Either way, we'll mail it to you or you can download it. It's vtntv.com, vtntv.com. So now you can listen to the rest of this with joy. Hallelujah. <laughs> Number three, what prophetic events must be fulfilled before the rapture? There are no prophetic events that must precede the rapture. Jesus, uh, the, the predicted events of prophecy have to do with the period of time following the rapture, leading up to the glorious return of Jesus Christ. That's the second coming. Just make sure I just keep repeating this over and over again. Make sure that you get it right. The difference between the rapture of the church and the second coming of Christ. The rapture of the church is when the church is caught up to meet Christ in the air. The second coming of Christ is when he returns after the great tribulation period, which we are already in heaven judgment seat of Christ, marriage supper of the Lamb. He comes back to the earth riding a white horse. That's what Jeannie has uh, put on the front of her study of Revelation book. And King of Kings, Lord of Lords, he comes back. He defeats the Antichrist, beast system, false prophet, all those characters at the Arm Battle of Armageddon. And then he sets up his kingdom, his millennial kingdom for a thousand years. Now, I know there are people in kingdom now teaching dominion the, uh, theology. They believe that we're going to set up the kingdom and then Jesus comes back. That's not true. That's not right. It's not Bible. Jesus will set up his own kingdom and uh, he, he is going to, he gonna, he's going to set up his own kingdom and he, the kingdom of this world are going to become the kingdoms of God. So no prophetic events uh, to precede the rapture. Um, the rapture could take place at any given moment. It is well for the believer to regularly tell himself, perhaps today. When you wake up in the morning, perhaps today. When you go to bed at night, perhaps tonight while I'm sleeping. Going up in the rapture. Lord Jesus, hallelujah. And number four, how shall I prepare for the rapture? Surely the greatest experience in life will be to be uh, brought into the presence of God as a good soldier, a faithful servant. 
the essential preparation for the rapture is that I be a Christian. I should be taken to, I could be taken to heaven any moment. So that should motivate me to exemplary Christian service, earnest prayer, faithful witnessing, godly living. All these will be a part of the approval uh, that can come in heaven. We all must so live as to hear Jesus say in that day, well done, good and faithful service. So just remind yourself on a daily basis, it could be today, perhaps today, perhaps the Lord will return. You can't prepare for it as far as knowing the day and the hour. The Bible says no man knows. Uh, number five, when the rapture comes, what will happen to the children? Now, uh, some people disagree with this, but all the children who have not reached the age of accountability, uh, the mercy and grace of God will see to it uh, under the doctrine of grace that these children will also be included and taken home to be with the Lord. Now, I heard, I think I heard this. I may have misunderstood it or heard it wrong, but I think I heard some time ago that there was a doctrine out there. Some were teaching that if you're a child of a, a sinner, uh, the child won't go because they're covered under the authority of the, of the parents. But that's not, I don't believe that. I don't believe, not anybody going to be left behind. Th those that have believed in Christ are born again are going to go in the rapture. But the children that are innocent, the, and, and, you know, it, everybody thinks that maybe the children's age of accountability is 12 or 13 or whatever. They take Jesus when he was, um, actually he had been teaching the scholars of that day, but his parents thought he was lost and they went looking for him. He was about 12 years old, 12 or 13. And there are other reasons why people believe it'll be 12 or 13, but it, it, it's not necessarily to, to faction out on the, the age group, but we know that children uh, come under the heading of uh, grace and innocence. So I, I believe that the, all the children, whether their parents are Christians or not Christians, they're going to go in the rapture. Now you can take comfort with that or take issue with that. Um, so the children of unbelievers and believers will all be included all the children of the world will be taken to heaven and the unborn children of the world as well. Now, number six, what impression will the rapture make on the world? Oh, this is so, so powerful. <clears throat> what, what impression will the rapture make on the world? Now, uh, there's what, seven billion people, maybe eight billion people in the world now. And just think if just 10% of those people are saved and born again, th there could be more. But what if it's just 10%? What is going to happen when, in the world when 10% of the world's population uh, are missing? They've disappeared mothers go into their baby's bedroom, the nursery, uh, getting up in the morning, and the baby's gone. Employees don't make it to work. And the employers are looking for their employees and they can't find them. They're not at home. They don't answer their, <laughs> their mobile phone. <laughs> They're gone. Millions, hundreds of millions of people disappear all at the same time. Now, this is a miraculous. This is a miracle of God. And this is why he's God and, and we're not. Just think that there are so many time zones in the world. If you knew what time the Lord was going to catch us all up, if you knew what time the rapture was going to take place, it would be different on the East Coast as on the West Coast. It'd be different <laughs> In Canada, as in Mexico, it'd be, and I, this is another thing that I, I don't think most Americans, I don't think most Americans are even thinking about the rest of the world. I think they're just thinking about America. 
And I understand that to a point. We are Americans. We live in America. And, and you know, you think about America. But you got to realize this is a worldwide event. There are going to be people in every nation of the world, on every continent. They're going to be gone. They're going to be missing. Now, just think that through for a minute. Now, you, you can think of it religiously or, uh, you know, um, mystery-wise, but just think, think it through. Uh, wherever you live, wherever you're watching, your hometown, your state, your country, with, through live stream, VTN reaches about 14 countries. So if you're watching anywhere in the world, just think about where you are, your, your city, your state, your nation. What would happen if 10% of all the people were gone? In, in the twinkling of an eye, they're gone. They've disappeared. They're not there anymore. Millions of kids don't show up for school. <laughs> you know, eh, the kids get excited when it's a snow day and they get to stay home and play in the snow. But we need our kids to start thinking about, oh, man, what about it? it's uh, the day of the rapture? They're not going to have to go to school. <laughs> and uh, there won't be much of a school when all the kids, uh, that, and let's just say 10% of them are missing, are gone, and teachers are gone. Uh, what, what's what's going to happen? What is this event going to do to our culture, to our society? What impression will the rapture make on the world? The answer, of course, depends upon the preoccupation and involvements in which the world finds itself at the time of the rapture. However, we still must conclude that the disappearance of Christians of the world and the children of the world will leave a stunning impression upon the minds of people. What, what, what's, what's, what are all the powers to be? The leaders, the politicians, the uh, daily prognosticators, Fox News, CNN News, CBNC, all, all of the news media, what are they going to, what are they going to do? What are they going to say? Can you imagine these early morning talk shows after the day of the rapture or the day after the rapture? They're going to be terrified. And there will probably be some preachers left that preached against the rapture or that weren't saved. They're going to be asked to be guests on radio programs and TV programs, and they're going to try to explain what happened. <laughs> Where are all these people? What happened to them? They're missing. They're not here. There's going to be tears. There's going to be riots. There's going to be anger. There's going to be all kinds of stuff. Uh, fear uh, that's going to go on. The Antichrist, because now remember, after the rapture, the Antichrist steps on stage and takes his position uh, in the Great Tribulation period. So the Antichrist will be hard-pressed to come up with an explanation. I, I, I'll just imagine what it's going to be like uh, on the Today program or whatever the early morning news things. I don't know what they are because I don't watch them. But what are they going to talk about? What have they got to say? They're going to be scared out of their wits. They're going to be terrified. Where are all these people? <laughs> Can you just see uh, when they turn it over to some of the reporters, take it away, and they, they just stand there. Well, I, I, I don't know how to explain this, but there are um, uh, millions of people missing all across uh, uh, America and around the world, Mexico and Canada, and there would be people in other countries saying, we don't know what happened to these people. It's been a strange phenomenon. There will be fear, there will be chaos because they don't know where these people were I mean, and they don't know where they are. Um, in lieu of this, the dismay uh, at the teaching of the scriptures now being so well proved by the rapture it may cause a lot of people to come to faith in Christ 
during the tribulation, they will face a fearful persecution. Now, let's, let's just flip over to Revelation uh, chapter 7. Revelation chapter 7, and let's look at verse 9 through 14. Revelation 7, 9 through 14. And after this, I beheld, and lo, a great multitude. Now, this is, this is the multitude of people, an innumerable number of people. No, you can't number. They're, they're unnumbered. This is the worldwide revival that's going to take place after the rapture of the church. And this I beheld, and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number, for all nations and kindreds and people, tongues stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes and palms in their hands. What are they doing? They're worshiping God. Now notice, listen to it again. A great multitude which no man could number. Now, we've had revivals throughout our uh, history of humanity. We've had great awakenings. Uh, we'll continue to have those until the rapture of the church takes place. But there's no worldwide revival. There's no uh, innumerable or multitudes of people that you can't number. We had pockets of revival here and there. and People are experiencing it right now today in different churches, even here in central Arkansas. Uh, so this will always be, and it always has been, but the innumerable people could not be multi could not be numbered a multitude of every nation are you listening this is not just not just for america this is every nation every kindred every people of every tongue they stood before the throne and before the lamb clothed with white robes and palms in their hands and cried with a loud voice saying salvation to our god which sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb. And all the angels stood round about the throne and about the elders and the four beasts and fell on their face before the throne and worshiped God, saying, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto our God forever and ever. Amen. And one of the elders said unto me, What are these? Now this is John the Revelator. He's experiencing this and he's writing it down. And the elders answered and said, What are these that are arrayed in white robes, and whence came they? Who are these people, and where did they come from? And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said to me, These are they which came out of great tribulation. These are all the people that are saved during the tribulation period. And they've washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. So these, these are people that are standing before the throne of God, worshiping Him. They have been born again and saved during, remember your, your diagram here, uh, they've been saved during the Great Tribulation period. It says, multitudes of Gentiles saved. All of Israel will be saved. That's what it says in Romans 11. So you take all of Israel and multitudes of people, Gentile, which is, is non-Jewish nations, heathen nations, Gentile nations, not, not the church. We're not, we're not Gentiles. We're redeemed. We're the redeemed. All these people are going to wind up saved because of the ministry of the 144,000 Jewish evangelists. And they're going to be preaching the gospel of the kingdom. The gospel of the kingdom, as it says in Matthew 24, 14, the gospel of the kingdom is the gospel of the kingdom that Jesus is coming back to set up his kingdom. If you ever had a doubt <laughs> that Jesus was a storybook or imaginary character or figment of somebody's imaginations, you won't have it then. You'll know that it's real. He's come. He came and got... <laughs> millions of people and took them up in the rapture. Uh, isn't it cowardly to wish for the rapture to deliver us from the problems of life? You know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to answer that tomorrow. You know, I had a 
minister that was visiting us. We were in the conference room and talking about the rapture. And all of a sudden he just slapped his hands on the table and said, you, you people that believe in a rapture, that's immature and self-centered. Whoa, I thought, what in the world is he talking about? Well, I'll talk about that tomorrow, and I'll tell you what the Apostle Paul said about that. Uh, right now, I want you to know how you can get a copy of Jeannie's book, A Study of Revelation. Have you wanted to study the book of Revelation? Did you give up because it was too hard to understand? Let's face it, Revelation not only challenges your imagination, but it leaves you asking, what does all of this mean? That is why Jeannie Caldwell wrote A Study of Revelation. After her many years of study in this subject, she was able to break down the book of Revelation chapter by chapter, giving you a clear understanding that will help you have a balanced perspective of end times events. The book A Study of Revelation is available for $14.99 plus shipping. To order, call 1-888-641-3375 or you can order online at www.vtntv.com. Our world is changing. Understanding the book of Revelation has never been more vital. Get your copy today. You need to get Jenny's book, A Study of Revelation. It's concise it's, she's compiled it very sensibly, and um, it, it's easy reading, and she really outlines uh, every chapter of the book of Revelation. Now, tomorrow we're going to uh, continue with the questions and the answers, uh, but I want to answer this one. Um, is, is it cowardly? Is it self-centered? Is it immaturity to believe for the rapture of the church? Absolutely not. And I'm going to tell you why. So be sure and join me on tomorrow's broadcast on Arkansas Live uh, tomorrow as we continue talking about God's order of events. And the reason I'm spending so much time uh, on the rapture is because that's the next event that's going to take place. <laughs> Hallelujah. Don't miss it. Remember, Jesus is Lord over Arkansas and where you're watching. Too. Send your questions, comments, and testimonies to Happy Caldwell at Post Office Box 26207, Little Rock, Arkansas 72221, or email Happy Caldwell at VTNTV.com. Remember to follow VTN on Facebook at VTN Your Arkansas Christian Connection. And follow Happy Caldwell on Twitter at Happy underscore Caldwell. VTN is on Roku. Search VTN in the channel store and add us to your lineup. Today's episode is available to watch on demand at VTNTV.com and click watch. You can also watch VTN via live stream at VTNTV.com.